I was almost 11 pounds when I was born. I was always the biggest kid in class, kindergarten up. It was humiliating. All I heard were, were insults, and uh, with that, you know, it was a lot of pain. My parents were both big, and so it was just, I guess, well, that's the way I was. You know, I was just gonna be big. It just didn't feel right. It hurt, and, you know, spiritually, physically, emotionally, everything hurt. But when I turned 18, I didn't go to church at all. I didn't want anything to do with it. I had a lot of anger. I was running to alcohol and running to drugs. The only thing I knew to do was to make people laugh, you know, whether it's making fun of myself or making fun of others. Because I just felt like this isn't right. Something just didn't feel right. And he was trying to fine tune which drug would, I guess, numb me. It wasn't working. It was very, very crippling, the, uh, the anger I had and the the depression, I probably topped out at about 5.50, and I didn't really weigh myself. I went to college but dropped out quickly. I, I just did drugs. I was just constantly high, in bed, laying in bed, staying up all night. I didn't want to face my parents. I still lived at home. And that was the low point. You know, it was just a very sad time. It, you know, I, would, I, did, I did not like myself a lot. I was looking in all the wrong places. There were a couple of times in my life where I did have a gun in my mouth and ready to, to end it all. I hated life. Marrying Maggie didn't do what I thought it was gonna do. I thought that it was gonna bring me out of the gutter, and it didn't. And we were both miserable, and we were headed towards divorce. I wanted to lose weight, but nothing worked. After taking um, way down advanced and being in the remnant church, my life started changing. In 18 months, I lost 257 pounds. I felt like a new person. Maggie and Andy, any doubt in your mind that if you come back and visit us in three years, you'll still be the skinny selves you are today? Good question. No doubt in my mind. just absolutely blows my mind. It, it's, it's amazing uh, that you guys are here and uh, it just, what God has done in your life. And then the story continued. We were on, um, you know, up there in New York with Matt Lauer and um, what, what, when did we meet? Y'all tell me that, y'all remind me because we met in what year? Uh, early 2003, end of 2002. Okay. When we first met. And so that experience of the weight loss, what year was that? That was um, definitely all of 03 into uh, the first month of 04. was okay. when we were really getting off the majority of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, okay, so then as we all have been in the remnant, there's no one in here that doesn't come into the remnant and then you get retested. I, I, Abraham was 100 years old. Mm -hmm when uh, he was, you know, tested again, you know, do you love, do you love me, God saying, more than your own son? Do you, do you love me more than your own son? And praise God, Abraham passed that test. Praise God. But anyway, so y'all have been retested. And uh, so tell me a little bit more about the retesting and everything else involved in that. Either one of you. Okay, so, um Obviously, we've been here for a long time, uh, 18 and a half years, and first of all, I want to say how grateful I am, and I'm trying not to cry, but there's so much gratitude in my heart to God first, 
and then to you. I have so much love in my heart for you because you've never given up on us, Gwen. If it's been a text to you, we've checking in, it's always been love. I mean, I could lose literally a half a pound and she would just be like the biggest cheerleader and jump up and down. And, um, and I'm so grateful for that. It's always been God's love coming through you. It's never been judgmentalness or, um, you know, you've always said, just don't give up, just don't give up. And that's why we're still here because you, God didn't give up on us and you didn't give up on us and so many other people you know, that God has used in our life. So I'm so grateful to God to be on this stage because there was a time where I didn't know if I ever would be again. And so that makes me very grateful to God first and then grateful to you. So thank you. Thank you for never stopping to get up here faithfully, no matter what test, talk about testing. Abraham was tested, but we've watched you be really tested and you make it look good. <laughs> oh, you really 100%. do. <laughs> that's sweet. Oh, that's sweet. And even through a lot of my testing, so a lot of my testing has been coming like since I've came to Waydown, but God knew I couldn't handle it. So like before Waydown, like I tried to kill myself. Like I used to cut my wrist and from the pain and, but you know, as soon the year we got into Waydown, I was told I would never have children, and so I started losing weight, I got pregnant. So I lost that first child at seven months, and even then, you were there encouraging me. You weren't even in the state, and you got on the phone with me and just loved me through it, and um, fast forward, I lost my dad, then I lost my sister, and then last year, oh. um, God allowed, during COVID, for my mom to die. And that was so hard because it was like, I have four younger adopted brothers and sisters who are in their 20s, and I'm like the rock of my family. Because of this message, I can be, or I would have fallen apart. And, um, but through that all, again, you, you sent us food, you texted us, you, you, you were praying for us. Um, never have you given up on us, you know? You've, you've loved us through everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know? And so that was really when so it was, I, so I kept my weight off. So I pretty much was pregnant three times from 2003 until I had my last child, Jacob, in 2007. And then so literally, like, so we went to the day, Today Show. I had just had our daughter, and I was all the way back down. Then we had our son, Jacob. That day, People Magazine calls me. I mean, literally, I had just left the hospital. I was not skinny and they wanted to interview us. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, but I knew it was such an opportunity for this truth to get out, for people to see that way down was the answer because it connected us to a relationship with God. And so I went on to get that weight off. And so from 2007 till 2017, you know, I might have some times of going up maybe 10 or 20 pounds, maybe, and then I would go back down. But then in 2017, God allowed me to lose my job and I then went to work in corporate America, which I had never done. So I went from working in a busy doctor's office, working, um, I even worked on, with a cleaning company on the weekends. Then I went to sitting all the time. Well, I didn't, even though everything I had been taught here, I did not cut back on my eating. Well, I wasn't as active. So what happened is the weight just started to come right back on. And now I look back and I know God did it to humble me because there was some pride in my heart, you know, and you always encouraged me with that too. And I praise God that that weight did come back on because that's what brought so much humility and kept me here fighting. And so it took three years, so from 2017 to 2020, I had gained about 100 pounds and I was miserable. So then my mom dies and I'm thinking, okay, both my parents were diabetics. There was heart disease, there was kidney failure, there was cancer, you name it, it's in my genes. And so I was like, God, if, it, if without this message, I don't stand a chance. And if I don't get this weight off, I'm just getting older. I, those curses, I mean, I know, you've made it clear. Deuteronomy 28, you've made the Bible clear to us. And so I was like, so we had a very serious discussion and we were like, okay, now is the time. And then Jacqueline Henry got up on a YCO and shared you know, if I'm not gonna do this now, I'm never gonna do it. And those words were like a brick upside my head. And I was like, 
oh my goodness, you know, we can't say, well, we're too busy. We couldn't go anywhere. I mean, I was working at home. We couldn't go to church. We couldn't go anywhere. And so basically we just ran to God. And then we, we were texting you, just checking in because we wanted to be 100% pointless. We're like, and we asked you to pray. And one thing I can say is when Gwen prays, things happen. And she's taught us that we can go to God and pray about anything. And so, I mean, it's, you know, even through those really hard things and losing my mom, um, it's been a fight. It hasn't been easy, but I'm grateful. That's why I'm still here. If God made it easy, you know, it's like you've always taught us. If he made it easy, I might run back and it might be too easy for me to go back. I might give up, you know, and I've watched people walk away from way down. I've watched people say things about you that weren't true, and it breaks my heart because I know it is not true. You know, we had the most amount of weight to lose of anybody I've known, and never once has there been a second of judgment no. or even disappointment like we let you down or we let, you know, it was always love. No, you know, you would always just be like, don't give up, baby. Don't mm -hmm. give up, you know. I'm praying for you. I love you guys. And it was so genuine. And so these tweets that you're sending out, these messages you're sending out from the stage, please don't stop. Please. Oh. Because they're what's changed my heart and oh. they're why I'm still here. <laughs> Truly, truly, oh my God, God has done a beautiful work. The humility in, in you both, I'm just like, this is um, honestly the most beautiful thing that's been said on the stage in a long time. Thank you very much. And I, I mean it with all my heart. I mean, I just, uh, I love everybody in here. I don't want someone to think, well, I haven't personally texted her, uh, but you can and, um, you know, most people have, I think, at some time or another. But um, I, I actually, I, didn't, I don't think I bring it, brought it back on stage, but, you know, uh, uh, I kept our thread. And I look back and, I mean, it was, it was beautiful the way you guys were. Um, okay, so, you know, during that time, what was beautiful is y'all would always kind of like get a, push a restart button. And you'd push a restart button and then it kind of fade away or whatever. But this time I went, oh my word. They started texting me, kind of marches a little bit, but I mean like literally seriously in April and all that. And uh, a year ago and I, I, I looked up and it was August. I said, they're still going for it. They're not going backwards. And then it went to September and October. And you know, I've got, I've got texts several times from each month and I just, you know, good morning, Gwen. We're just checking in. We want to be transparent. And here's where we are. And so y'all tell them what's happened in one year. Um, a lot of good, a lot of weight loss. <laughs> um, just a lot of, you know, humbling um, with, you know, deaths in the family, humbling with injuries in the house. You, you just... God is just showing me the older I get. I'm 43, I'll be 44. Just how much this world doesn't matter and how much the worries of this world don't matter. And the only thing that can save us is God. And, you know, you're the one that has always taught us how to fight, always been our cheerleader. But it's, I didn't even know there was a spiritual battle before this, uh, this place. I didn't know that I could choose to do right. I didn't know that I could fight. And you... You're kind of like our, our spiritual sensei, you know, you taught us how to, <laughs> the right moves, you know, we taught us death blows, you know, but, <laughs> but, but uh, all kidding aside, I mean, it's, it's been a beautiful year and amidst so much chaos in the world and, um, and, and it's still continuing. I keep learning, I keep getting humbled and keep changing and I'm convinced, you know, there, there is nothing else to do. There's nothing else to do with these lives we've been given than to, than to live for God. That's a beautiful answer to a question that I thought you might have just like said something about, you know, that you've lost 60 and <laughs> she's lost 
uh, 30. Almost 30. Right at 30. And yet you gave a much deeper, uh, a no. beautiful answer Just there, kind of Andy. That's face, beautiful. Wasn't that beautiful? <laughs> So truly what was more important to you was your spiritual walk and your relationship it with God. truly was and because in the past, you know, you can get so bogged down and worried about the weight loss and, oh, I went up half a pound today and tomorrow I'm down a pound. You know, it's just like too, too consuming to just think about that. And it's, uh, yeah, that was the difference my heart and mind was set on. I just want to get close to God. And it literally that just came off. You just... He puts that spirit in you then to get convicted and to, to want to reach out, to want to help, you know, and it's been a great year. <laughs> it's been a great year. So we were, we were adding it up back there and it's like, you've lost over a pound a week uh, and you've lost just in under. I mean, and I mean, but the, the joy of that, the joy and the encouragement to everybody out there that have like, you know, that have been ready to give up or ready to go to diets. They're ready to, you know, try manipulating the food. But, you know, uh, I know enough about your year that y'all were, you, you told me you, you were really, the more you listened, the more it convicted. And the more convicted you are, the more weight you lose. And so people go, why would people listen to those tapes? It's because it's rare to find someone that's convicting you of personal responsibility. And, and Way Down was founded. I mean, I, it, everybody kept calling it revolutionary because it wasn't out there. It was behavior modification. There were a lot of psychologists out there. But there, there, there was, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, um, people that would perhaps be involved in behavior modification, but no one had connected it to um, God. And so I was a pioneer in that. And I didn't, I didn't really know that because I was a dietitian and I didn't, I didn't read psychology and I didn't know what behavior modification really was except for just a small amount of it. And um, I certainly didn't have a psychology degree, but what you learned was that you needed to not go through seminary uh, it, you, you needed to have an open childlike heart for, for God. And so when I saw that it was hunger and fullness, and that, that does c come back into my degree, but my degree didn't teach that, not at all. That wasn't in the books at all. It was the food's fault, and I got um, seven years of that, seven years of studying the food. And boy, I knew that food. I knew every chemical in it and every everything and good foods. And I actually started Michael and Elizabeth off on a, quite, quite a, a regimen of no-no foods. And <laughs> they couldn't touch this sugar or couldn't do this, you know, in the beginning. And, uh, but I was developing, I was developing in the, in the process of, of like really studying. It just fascinated me that cows could sit there and just munch on grass all day and then make calcium rich milk. And, and yet n none of the books touch that and not one book gave credit to God. And so I became this humongo believer in that we were marvelously made and that when he said, do not worry about what you should eat or what you should drink, and of course that's referring to getting to eat at all uh, and you know that we're, we're going to even have any food that day because we're so poor. But at the same time, when Jesus pronounced all foods clean, it wasn't. But I knew that from just following peanut butter and jelly as it goes down, and what happens to peanut butter and jelly. You know, I mean, of course, we were told when we swallowed watermelon seeds that they would come out your ear and. <laughs> I mean, we didn't quite know the exact digestive process <laughs> as children, and, but the more I studied the digestive tract and the layers of protection that nothing can even get in you unless the body has, there's a wall, there's a magic wall there uh, in your, in your uh, you know, lo large and small intestines. And the, the walls of it have this layer 
and it is enzyme specific. It is literally specific for the molecule it wants. And so it has a carrier. Each one has a little taxi cab. And this taxi cab picks up only specific nutrients or specific things that you swallow. So that when you eat mud pies, it probably won't pick up mud. You know, the mud's gonna go right through you. And uh, that's a good thing, right? I mean, when your kids tend to bend over and pick up and taste the world. Uh, and, and so, you know, knowing that the acidity of the stomach is at a 1.5, it's like battery acid. It will, it, it will literally shred and kill anything in there. Just about everything is, it's so acidic uh, that it, it's killing almost everything you could possibly, you know, bacteria or whatever. And, um, but then as soon as it gets past the stomach, then the um, gallbladder and all the, there it's, it's, it's basically all the different enzymes that are coming out are a base. And so it takes acid and then it makes it neutral right there at the base of the stomach as it enters the duodenum. So you've got all this basic stuff going through, but all these enzymes are thrown on it to break it into smaller parts, but the little taxi cabs are in that wall. And so some things can get across that you might not want. So what happens if something gets across the wall that you shouldn't have eaten? Well, it then goes into a separate circulating system. There's a lot of capillaries on top of the gut and um, it goes through a separate system and it goes into like a, a portal vein, meaning liver. Uh, it's gonna go up to the liver. The liver is this chemical factory. It's just tons of, you know, enzymes and, you know, uh, chemicals in there. And it takes everything you've eaten, it turns it into what you need, which is basically, it's like gasoline for the car. I mean, you need a little bit of oil and some other things, but it mainly just wants carbohydrates. It just wants, so if you just happen to eat the carbohydrate, uh, it can go through the tongue and into the bloodstream. You, you eat some, some of it will go through the walls, but what it really, really wants for 90% of what you do is it, it won't, and a little bit of protein. I mean, you may have to, you know, grow a little bit more hair and fingernails and <laughs> a little bit more muscle as they're atrophying away. But, um, but, but, but for the most part, um, you know, a chicken leg or something. You don't need a whole lot of protein. It's, it, you know, you need, you need that energy. And so, um, you know, God makes most food have carbohydrates in it. So, you know, God's given you what you need and the liver then ta takes so that when I, they pull my blood tonight and I pulled your blood and I pulled your blood and we analyze it. Well, how come our blood all looks the same but we all ate a different diet. It's because you don't have to worry about what you should eat or drink. I mean, you're, stop it, stop that. Now, if you're overeating, I can't promise you anything because you are messing up your liver, you're messing up, I mean, you're having to transport, not, I mean, like you starve yourself and then you do this or you, you do these weird diets, low carbohydrate or high carbohydrate and you, you do all these weird things and eliminate foods and stuff like that and you don't go by what your body's calling for. And, um, uh, you know, and, and you can tell, you just keep the variety going. Uh, I could tell I, I really wanted a carrot the other day I mean, the carrot was so sweet. I mean, it's just really neat how God will make it match to your body's needs. And it, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing so that we don't have to worry about all that. We don't have to worry about the scales. If you're using hunger and fullness, you're gonna go down. You don't have to. If you have a lot of weight to lose, you know, the main thing I want the scales for is to show that you're not lying to yourself because we lie to ourselves all the time. I mean, name one time that you've ever walked by a mirror that you were not holding in your stomach. <laughs> and then you walk past the mirror and you let it go. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, we, we want it. We, what we see in that mirror is not always actually reality. 
And that's why sometimes we like, somebody sends us a photograph and we like, we get it and we go, we get it bigger and we go, that's me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, you know, so we, we're, we're wanting to know what do we really, what do we really look like? You know, what have we really done before God? Have we glorified him? And uh, uh, so just truth sets you free. So I'm going to say my theory on Maggie and Andy Sorrells, and what, what a couple. My theory is going to be that y'all uh, didn't listen to lies. You, you saw love. You didn't, you saw that that was love, love here, love from God. And therefore, you knew that God had not given up on you. And that the, the churches, the church, the people, the saints, you know, a bruised reed, uh, Jesus would not step on. Uh, a smoldering wick, he would not blow out. Smoldering wick. And there's smoldering wicks around the world. And, you know, we're to be Christ-like and kind and non-judgmental and very gentle in our teaching as we're trying to show others. If we have a, some, a message to get to other people about what, how they should be living, it should be most merciful because you've been extended so much mercy. And so um, I, I, I pray, I pray that uh, God only gives me more of it, but I know that it is truly in my heart. It's truly in my heart that I, 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 I love, I love every, everyone seeking God. And, um, and I, I know that it, it's, it's not over. It's just not over till it's over. It's, there's, there's a chance for everybody. There's a chance for everybody. And so 60 and 30, I mean, how does it feel? I feel great. I'm able to, uh, now that it's warming up, I'm able to play any type of sport, or at least try to. I'm not saying I'm good, but there for a long time, I didn't even want to. It's just the extra weight just drug down on me. I just wanted to stay indoors more, but now I love getting out. And, uh, you know, it's life is becoming life again. And uh, especially now that some of these restrictions are easing up, hopefully, uh, you know, who, who, it's going to be an awesome year. You know, last year was awesome. This is going to be an awesome year. It's, that's this life in this church. It just keeps getting better if we are willing to do the work. If we're willing to do our part, you know, God is so merciful and loving, and you have been great and always been here. You know, I can't say it enough, but you're always supporting us, never judging, judging us. So if anybody out there thinks she is or thinks anything negative, you need to check yourself first, you know, before you, you know, look at someone who's just trying to love you. Yes, and just trying to get us to a relationship with God. And one thing that I had mentioned to you before, but one thing I love is your, um, the new journals you made. And, you know, you talked about, I think it was at the rally, um, how, you know, just take the journal, like, look at it, you know, you may have a week that you go up, but look at it as a whole, you know? And so I think we got ours at the end of February. And so, I mean, I'm still filling it out, but I literally counted up. I've lost nine pounds since I got that. Wow. And I mean, there were times that I went up, but see before, what would I do? I would be discouraged. I would want to quit. Even if I gained half a pound, I mean, it was ridiculous, but... Um, but because you said that, I was like, okay, no, Gwen said it might go up again. Actually, you were like, okay, it's probably going to go up again. Um, but guess what? It's going to come back down. And yes. hopefully it's not going to be higher than it was. And that's the truth. Like, it's not. It, even though, though it might go up a little bit, then you go down more, then it might go up a little bit, but you're still not as high as you were before, you know. And so and then overall, you're netting weight loss. You're bearing fruit, you know. And so that's been so encouraging. So, um, that's been huge. And then being in classes, um, I get the honor of doing a local class here with Heather Higgins and a bunch of our friends. And um, even people zoom in. There's um, some saints from um, Alabama that zoom in. And then Beth Smiley from Ohio. And it's so much fun. And I'm going to tell you, Gwen, like this class, like I haven't felt this fire in my soul like this class, probably since revolution, like, because wow. just being, 
you know, I mean, it's, it, you know, especially when you're busy, it's good to have the Facebook classes. Don't get me wrong at all. But being able to have this class, and like some of them are zooming in, so they're not here. So it's not an excuse, you know, because you can still have that. But um, we just finished week three, and as a class, we're already down 60 pounds. Wow. So it is wow. like so encouraging. And so, um, and that was back from 2005. Um, and the message hasn't changed. You, you're still saying the same thing. You're still encouraging us. Even in there, you're, you know, you're on that road out in the desert and you're like, are you thinking about giving up now? Come along. You know, it's like, she's been saying it the whole time. And so, um, the one thing I would say is if there's anybody out there and you could have gained five pounds back, you could have gained a hundred pounds back, whatever it is, don't give up because we are proof that if you keep fighting, you're going to get it right again. And it's going to feel so much better. And the answered prayers, oh my goodness, Gwen, we've been here 18 and a half years. And I would hear you say, um, no, no, you might not understand, you know, like, are you really like every prayer? Like it, I mean, ex even especially since January of this year, I, it blows my mind, like to the point that it makes me weep because like, I will pray things that there, I think there's no way it's gonna happen. And then bam, it's answered. Ugh. And so I'm just like, that's, that's, the, that's the connection. That's how I know it's different than it's ever been before. Cause I've had answered prayers before, but like literally to where like, I mean, we're pulling up to a light that usually takes five minutes to turn green. And before I even get out in the name of Jesus Christ, which you taught us to pray because it's from the Bible, before I even get it out of my mouth, it's turned green. And I'm like, God, really? Again? Like, you know, it's just, it blows my mind. And thank you. So that's all stuff you've taught us. I never, I went to church my whole life, whole life. I was 500 pounds in a church. And when I joined Way Down, do you know what my friends told me? They were afraid for me. It was 500 pounds. They were afraid for me for joining Way Down. And all I can think of is, they were like, you're the best Christian we know and you're leading everyone to Jesus. And I'm thinking, well, what Jesus am I leading them to? Mm -hmm. I'm not free. I mean, I'm cutting myself. I'm 500 pounds. I mean, sure, I could check off. I didn't drink alcohol, I didn't smoke. I didn't like do any of that stuff, but I was 500 pounds and no, nobody ever loved me enough until I heard you talk on Way Down. Nobody mm -hmm. ever loved me enough to say, that that was an idol. You weren't saying, well, you're fat. No, you were saying, you're filling your heart up with an idol. You're running to something like, you know, I never did drugs, but food was my drug. Mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I did, you know? And so, um, just thank you, thank you. Thank I cannot God. thank you enough for being a vessel for God Almighty, and you never give up. Even when there are times that we would understand if you gave up. I mean, I would, I know the battle that, I know the testing we get and I know it's way 10 million times harder for you. And so thank you because when you think it's not making a difference, we're proof that it's making a difference. So thank you. You certainly are proof. Thank you, yes, say that. Everything is peaceful and lightness. Happy always doing.